Okay, this next video is going to cover uh, quizzes. There are a lot of things that you can do with quizzes. So what you're going to do for your assignment is create a quiz and make sure it's in the folder that you've created, the one folder. So click on your folder, make sure you're within that folder, and then click on Add Material. This will go just directly underneath the file you've uploaded. Click on Add Test and Quiz. There's a lot of information that you'll want to know before you start creating a quiz, but of course you can always come and edit it later. So for now, I want you to make the quiz worth five points. Give it a name. Call it chapter 1.1 quiz or make it related to whatever content you're teaching. The due date, this is a nice feature because if you actually give it a due date, it'll automatically appear on the right column of the home screen for every student who is enrolled in this class. So it's kind of like a little reminder board or announcement board saying, hey, you need to do this, this is due, and it'll provide a link so it'll take them right to it. Uh, so if you don't, do a due date, you don't have to, uh, it can just stay open, um, just leave it open for now. The category, the category comes from your grading. So if you were to go to your grade book and set up different categories like quizzes, tests, homework assignments, discussion board. I know in our school we have two different types of grades. We have an effort grade and an academic grade. That's where we would establish this and set this up. For now, we can either create a new category. In fact, let's do that. Let's, let's create a new category and let's call it quizzes. And this will now show up as a quiz. Okay, you can give it a numerical grade or a pass fail or letter grade. Keep it numeric for now. You can individually assign students, so maybe you had an extension quiz that you wanted to give just a few of your students. Okay, you could do it like that. Make sure it's visible to students. When it's green, highlight it. When it actually says it's visible, when you hover your mouse over it, it says visible to students. That means that it's visible to students. You can allow students to make comments on it. So if they had a question or they didn't like a certain phrasing, or thought it was a fair test or unfair or something, uh, you can allow students to make comments on it. And then you can copy quizzes to courses, but only after it's finalized. Click Create, and it's going to bring you to a whole bunch of new options. In this quiz, I'd like you to create, it doesn't matter, up to five questions, no more than five questions. You can even just do one question and make it worth five points, or two questions and make one worth two and one worth three and you can kind of see how that works. Um, there are different things you want to make sure you've clicked on to make the quiz visible. So under the questions you're just going to add questions. Settings by default are going to make the quiz unavailable. You'll always want to make sure you click on settings and you'll want to do this very first thing. Under availability click available now. You can create a time limit. I like to do some of my quizzes with two attempts so that they can look at the mistakes they made and try to fix them, if, especially if they're just kind of smaller quizzes or, or like formative assessments, more for them to see how they're doing. You can tell the question order to be randomized or not. Page breaks just makes it look uh, a little bit easier to read so that it's not cutting questions in the middle if you happen to print off the page. Okay. There is a Spanish keyboard use for students who speak Spanish. You can turn that on or off. Question review, that's simply that's just a, a reminder for students to review all of their answers before they hit submit. I recommend this, especially for middle school and high school students. Quizzes sometimes students just tr like try to breeze through really quickly, click, 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 and then submit so they think they're done with their homework. 
And oftentimes I'll have students not pass a quiz, not because they don't understand it, but because they forgot to answer one or two of the questions. This will give them one more reminder to double check all of their solutions before they can hit submit. You can make it resumable or not. And view submissions. This allows for students to either yes, go back and view what they submitted and it shows whether they got it correct or incorrect. This makes it so that no student can go back and see what they got. I don't recommend this uh, unless it really is like a quiz that you don't want anybody else to know about until, until later. I usually like to at least allow them to view their submissions. It doesn't tell them what the right answer is, it just tells them whether or not they got it correct. The automatic feedback is actually very valuable for quizzes uh, and tests, so I would recommend this. And this gives them the correct answers. I don't usually click on this because oftentimes I want them to go back and see if they can figure out what they did wrong if it tells them it's wrong. And then this tells this 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 can toggle to be to show the the value of the points to the students. Yes or no. Make sure you hit save changes before you move on. Now that you've got the quiz set up the way you want it to be, the preview just gives you what a student would be able to see if they were to click on it. The results and comments just come afterward. So let's go create a question. There are several different styles of questions. You'll want to play around with them. Um, True, false, multiple choice, ordering, short answer, fill in the blank, matching. All of these are self-grading through Schoology except for the short answer. This one is something that you would have to grade yourself. For now, let's just look at true or false. I like this because you can still import images, attach links, Format it, write your question, is this video, well, I'll say this, this video is helpful, true or false. Okay, And then here is the possible solutions. And what I like about this is if it's false, you can, you can actually have them fill in the blank. So the underlined word is the key word. And then it says, students, if the, if the answer is false, what is the actual phrase that belongs here? And of course they could say, kind of helpful. The wording and phrasing is very specific. So oftentimes this is a very difficult thing for a computer to grade accurately. The point values. Every time you create a question, you need to change the point values. Do you remember how we made our quiz worth only five points? Well, if the point, if this question in the quiz is worth ten points, then it's going to be too much. I'm going to make this question worth only one point. Once you're done, hit create question. And now, if you want to see what it looks like from a student's perspective, click on preview and begin test or quiz and here you go this video is helpful true or false true false ah correct the indicated underlined bolded etc phrase here's the phrase that needs to be corrected kind of helpful that video will take you through finish the quiz uh, add maybe one or two questions to it and then we'll see how you do